Welcome to a brand new episode of Sequel Rights, the podcast where we take a look at the franchises that make you go, they made how many of those? And we give each and every sequel a fair trial. My name is Justin Camps and I'm here with Elizabeth Helley and DJ Sock Puppet. Oh, <laughs> well, it is my Christmas wish to have you all here with me today. And I got it. You got it. You got it. You're here. We're here talking the final Hopefully, <laughs> a Cinderella story. We, we call wish. we call the fifth one the nail in the coffin. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, a Christmas story, the final wish. <laughs> it's it's another Halloween one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Um, a Cinderella story, a Christmas wish. Oh, you guys, guys. Uh, well, you know what? Every week we have our own Christmas wish. That uh, you guys reach out to us and let us know what you think of the podcast. That you follow the five stars on Apple Podcasts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> follow, the five stars. follow Follow and give us the five stars and find the baby Jesus or the baby Wait, Wait, Don't Tell Me podcast. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you uh, want to comment on Tyler's jokes right now, Elis, where can people reach oh, out no. to us? Uh, Please do. I need feedback. Email us at Tyler Hyman. No, just kidding. <laughs> uh, SequelRights at gmail.com or on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at SequelRights. And please do rate and review us on Apple Podcasts. The reviews mean a lot. Well, here we are. It's December. It's Christmas time. And yet again, another Cinderella looking for her Santa Charming. Once upon a time, there was a girl who loved Christmas. Grab my balls. Cat, quit daydreaming and do something. Take these and these. <laughs> yeah. Christmas. So, Cat, you're one of the Santa Land singers? Yeah, I'm huge with the four to six year olds. Santa's coming to town. What's your Christmas wish, Cat? I want to write and sing songs. My dad used to say, if I could dream it, I could be it. Do you think anybody cares about your stupid songs? This is an invite. This is to the Winter Art and Gala. This is the biggest event of the year. I asked for all the toys, all the goodies. Oh, you guys. Wow, look at all that Christmas joy in that trailer. Toys, toys, toys. Toys, toys, toys. Oh, man, the songs. You guys, there's more songs in this. There's a lot of songs in this. There is. I wish that it was Once Upon a Song because then there'd only be one song. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what that title means. Yeah. Only once upon a song. Uh, not thrice or fives. <laughs> I don't know what the words are. But in this one, the songs are magical because not only do they have no audio amplification whatsoever, no microphones, <laughs> no speakers, yet somehow what's coming out of their mouths is like the most tinny, it's, electronic, yeah. auto-tuned madness you've ever heard in your well, life. When you work at a billionaire Santa's, vi- Santa's village, <laughs> he has state-of-the-art performance technology. Yeah. It's uh, when you work at a, a weird the Winter Garden. Not sure why he's Santa super rich. Land? Yeah. Why is he super he's rich? He's a billionaire with a capital B. Billionaire with a capital B. And Wait, did you of, say billionaire? <laughs> I said billionaire. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and he runs a mall. Creepy. Santa he runs a mall. house for teenagers <laughs> yeah. that just hang around and make jokes. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> He does run a se- creepy Santa mall. He does. Outdoor Santa thing. Yeah. Yeah, and instead of it's having... It's a family tradition. ...an old fat guy that looks like Santa, he has his hot son dress up as Santa. <laughs> He's yeah. like, yeah, kids, sit on this 15-year-old's lap. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't be complaining, but wouldn't the kids and the parents be like, what is this crap, you know? <laughs> yes. It's uh, Greg Sulkin who plays uh, Nick Winterbottom. Is it bottom? No, garden. <laughs> winter garden. <laughs> winter bottom. <laughs> it should be winter bottom. That's more fun. Nick power bottom. His name is Dominic, and then he goes by Nick. Uh, yeah. His agent uh, was probably like, hey, so uh, you want to be in a movie where... You want to build a snowman? Most of the time, you're in a hideous, hideous <laughs> Santa costume. 
It'll be a really hard challenge because you got to be serious. You know how in all those movies you just look too hot? Now we're going to make you be Santa. Now, yeah. now you're going to be teen Santa, but with the gut and the beard. Yeah. Do I still get to do Runaways? Sure. Yeah. You can still be in Runaways. This you want guy to tr- is like Cinderella Story. He is like the prince of Cinderella Story franchise. This guy, his he has four faces that he can make (laughs) yeah his reactions are not uh at least in this movie it could have been what they chose in the edit i don't want to to put it on his talent but it's just like oh like i'm pleased with this i am shocked by this and or i'm confused like (laughs) it's three faces that he just settles into this, this guy, Greg, has worked with every single Cinderella except Hilary Duff. He was the Alex, Selena Gomez, Alex's main love interest in Wizards of Waverly Place in the last couple seasons in the movie or whatever. All right. He Are there actual wizards in that show? Yeah. Okay. She's the main wizard. Um, so you remember how in the Pretty Wizards Little Liars. The Wizards of Waverly Place and there's no wizards. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe they're like <laughs> math wizards. Anyway, um, you remember how I said in Pretty Little Liars that Lucy Hale was uh, sleeps with her teacher? Right. He plays said teacher's younger brother, and they made out once in the show. <gasps> and he, it, with, he also... And lied about it, that's, probably. That sounds yeah. scandalous. <laughs> with his, yeah, he made a pretty lie about it. Yes. He also... Act, I don't know if they made out, but the, he was definitely friends with Sophia Carson in Faking It, the MTV okay. show um, about fake lesbians. And then was now James this. Franco in there? <laughs> <laughs> I liked that show a lot when it was on. Actually, it was really funny. I, I don't know. I have any knowledge of it. Oh yeah, it was like an MTV show where it was like two girls who were best friends and they pretend to be lesbians to like become popular and be homecoming queens because they go to a really, really liberal school in Austin. This was part of MTV's drama resurgence, like Team Wolf, when they're actually doing scripted shows. It was shows. at the exact same oh, okay. time. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Um, and it actually ended up being a really sweet show. But anyways. Um, he was in that, so he has worked with every single Cinderella. I desperately looked for pictures of him with Hillary Duff and something, and could not find it. Because I was like, like, "He's got to work with her." They one time sat in the same floor at a yeah. Mel's drive-in. I, I know, he should have been at the yogurt shop when she ran yeah. into Sophia Carson. But anyways, so he is like the ultimate prince at this point. Yeah, that's right. And uh, yeah, he's he's. Uh, I guess it's a tradition to make the youngest son work as Santa. It's your tradition. I mean, I don't know if it's a good tradition, <laughs> but it's like, I don't know. It's like so they can, you know, learn what real people are like because they're so rich. That's right. Yeah. Cause billion with a B. That's right. That's right. And, you know, good thing you guys are sitting down because I'm going to say something really shocking right <gasps> now. This movie was Greg Sulkin's first time singing and dancing. <laughs> oh, I have another shocking thing. He didn't sing at all. Ah, no. <laughs> if you look in the credits, it's not him, and I think you can tell. Who was it? Uh, you know, I don't have... It's, was it it's, Drew uh, Seeley? No, it was not. <laughs> it says Laura Morano featuring Chris P., but I think that's like uh. the artist's name. There, it's like there was someone with a real name in the, okay. in the credits. But, but yeah, I mean, I they're looked. clearly lip-syncing no, it's Chris the entire P-E-E. time. <laughs> The the only reason that I know she's singing is because I know she can sing. Like I looked it up and I found videos of her just singing a cappella, and she's a wonderful singer. So I don't know what possessed them to do this to her because she can sing. She also has like pop songs out and stuff. So yeah, yeah. One of her songs uh, is called F E O U, and I was like, "What does that stand for? Am I really super old? Like I couldn't figure it out." And I listened to the song, and it stands for "Fuck Each Other Up." Whoa. Oh my god! Yeah. Whoa. She's, so she is serious. Yeah. I don't know if I'd want her working at my Santa Land and with that kind of language. <laughs> toys, toys, toys. Yeah. Her big starring role was Austin and Allie on Disney Channel, where she was a sensitive singer songwriter, mm-hmm. and some pop star boy, um, like stole her music or whatever. But then they become friends, and she writes all the songs, and he becomes famous, and eventually. She gains confidence and also becomes famous, and they fall in love or something. And the well, boy yeah. is Austin, and she is Allie. Yes. Okay. <laughs> they usually on those Disney shows like cast people who can sing. So yeah, it makes sense. She can sing. I or, don't know why this movie decided to do this horrible travesty to her. Or they inject them with the genetic vocal enhancing drugs that yeah. they have developed at Disney. Yeah, you, Channel you guys want to hear? I think I think we've been talking about her, 
heard her vocals a long time. I think we need to hear. Let's hear it. Let's hear. I'm, I'm skipping. We already heard. I was going to play a little bit of Toys, 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 but we heard it in the trailer pretty much. Um, so let's listen to the big show stopping number for a hot minute here. Uh, everybody loves Christmas. Uh, I'm already crying. But it should be a happy song, right? Called Everybody Loves, loves Christmas. It. Yeah, but the lyrics are like, why know, I'm just kidding. people <laughs> like it so much? Probably because her dad's dead. <laughs> <laughs> and her mom. Everyone's and dead. Everyone's dead. Yeah. Here we go. It's that time of year again. A time that I don't understand. Wishing I wasn't afraid. You can hear it. <laughs> you can hear it. She sounds again. like a robot. All this time I've been hiding now. They purposely add all this extra wiggle know. for no reason. Tell me now, cause I don't understand. Help me out, cause I don't. This is a song about someone who. Does not know what Christmas is. <laughs> yeah. I don't understand. There's what? There's toys, and then like people gather around, and there's nog of some kind. I'm sorry if me uh, stopping it while the song was clearly building up to the chorus bugged people's ears, but um, you know what? I didn't want to hear anymore. <laughs> um, yeah. So uh, you know, this is uh, we get we get um, yet another. Uh, music video <laughs> opening. And this is the worst one. This yeah. is the worst This girl's one. a wonderful singer, but she is not an amazing ballet dancer like Sophia Carson was. No. She's not even that great of a pop dancer. She's, you know, she's passable. But <laughs> There's barely any there's, dancing. Yeah. There is multiple... There's a, there's a bit in the movie that's making a thing that she can't actually dance later. Yeah. Uh, but in this, they're trying to pass it off as if she can yeah, it's it honestly plays like there's a Target commercial before this movie. <laughs> yeah. I, and I also was like, because so this one instead of um, this one is like fully opening credits. And I was kind mm-hmm. of like, I wish this was just the end already. Yeah. And this was like the end credit song. I, I was watching watch this with my girlfriend. She was like, did we just fast forward to the end? Like, <laughs> is this the end of the movie? And I'm like, nope, I think it's, I think it's, I was like, they all start with a music video. She's like, really? And I'm like, yeah. yeah ever since the second yeah, one. Yeah, and she's <laughs> like, and this is a music video. And I'm like, I think they're trying for it to be. Yeah. And then it turns out she's just standing in front of a store window looking at stuff. And her <laughs> stepmom is like, grab my balls. Quick, grab my balls, quick. Pretty much, right? Yeah. yeah. She um, meant Christmas balls. Yeah, Christmas but balls. But one thing that this movie... No one calls them that. Grab my balls. <laughs> <laughs> one thing this movie brought back from the very first one that we have not had since is this like opening, once upon a time, there was a blah, 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 and then the ending, they end with that too. Right. Sure. So. Um, uh, also, like, is this the first time we have a s- evil stepmother that's been cast like... To not be funny? Yeah, it is. Yeah. And it totally changes this movie. Like, it really This is does. the first one that's like, it has funny moments, but it's not really a comedy like all the others were. Yeah. Like, this lady is just cast to be the evil stepmother and right. be evil. She's like super evil and She has like some and... kind of comical moments, but she is not funny. No, no, no. She's not like hamming it up or no. anything like the other, some of the other actors. She's also not a comedic character actress. Right. I don't even know who she is. I have no idea who she is. No. Uh, I felt bad, but I didn't care to look up. Who she, well, her name is uh, <laughs> Johanna or Joanna Newmarch, and um, she is best known for the Hallmark series When Calls the Heart uh, with Lori Laughlin. Oh, no. Oh, no. no. Canceled. Oh, no. And she also appeared in a supporting role in No Joke. 15 films in the Garage Sale Mystery Series starring Lori Laughlin. But we are never going to watch those movies because they <laughs> never were theatrically released. They oh. were all on TV. You got to have at least one in theaters for That's us right. to, What's to get What's a garage? To it. Is, is it like an anthology movie where somebody's like, oh, like Grandpa's prosthetic leg was sold to this no, person? No, it's like one lady who like some, I don't know what she does, but every title is like, you know, like, Murder in D minor, murder, a picture frame murder, you know, like murder in the Oriental cabinet, you know, like it's like it's it's just like almost like I, I would say like 12 of the 15 have the word murder in the it title. It would be great, too, if it was not an anthology series and was a continuing story. Uh, you know, it is of Lori Laughlin. Oh, 
Okay, and oh there's like God. a continuing story. It's not like a murder of the week. No, it is a murder of the week, but her story is ongoing. The She's indigenous to... people in the combos cabinet. Yeah. <laughs> but everyone's really sad because they had just um, released 15 when the scandal happened and Lori Laughlin got canceled from Hallmark. 16 and 17 were already in the bank and they don't know what they're going to do with them. And they had signed them all the way through 19. I think you got to just start deep fake uh, John Samos' face on her face. I think what they should do is record them onto a bunch of VHS tapes yeah. and secretly put them out at a bunch of garage sales until someone eventually <laughs> finds one. And so so many bootlegs someone's like, oh my God, this is the 16th episode of Garage <laughs> Sale <laughs> Murder. Or whatever it's called. Uh, and also, I found it at Justin, a garage sale. Justin, you are now the president of the Hallmark Channel. Yes. <laughs> and, and just one more. For I just wrote measure. number 18. <laughs> this one doesn't star Lori Laughlin, but this lady, Joanna Newmarch, is in it. It's called... <laughs> It's called Murder She Baked, a pudding plum mystery. No. <laughs> what? I quit. I'm done. <laughs> is, put, is pudding plum like the name of a I'm person? I'm taking my headphones out when I'm walking out the door. <laughs> no, Tyler, come back. Oh, my gosh. So, yes. I mean, to be fair, though, I did not really think this lady was bad in this no, movie. No. But she is not trying to be the hamming it up stepmother. Like, no, just, it's very different. She has different. some very, like, chilling <laughs> moments where you're like, wow, this lady has no freaking heart. The and, script yeah. of this movie makes her evil as fuck. And this is the first time where I'm like, how do all of these um, allegedly amazing dads get yeah. duped into marrying these yeah, horrible That's always been women? The question. Oh, yeah. And, like, they never, they never talk about it. Like, like, and then this one, the extremes are insane. Like, a plot point is her using her Instagram influencer wannabe daughters to steal the only keepsake that she has of her father, who was allegedly a Doctors Without Borders veterinarian who (laughs) saved... Who, who, was, <laughs> who saved manatees and was like an explorer and one of the most altruistic, incredible people in the world. And his second wife, let's allege, I get could be his third wife, who knows, um, is the worst person on the planet. Yeah. Well, knowing how evil she is, she yeah. probably was putting up a huge front. Sure. Uh, and then as soon as she, he died and uh, like, you know, his inheritance couldn't fully go to cat or whatever. Yeah. Uh, that's when she just turned totally evil and wanted to use all the money. Here's the thing that I just want to jump to, like talking about inheritance, because I'm going to forget about it. The end of this movie. <laughs> I'm just going to jump to the end of this movie. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. The end of this movie, she's like, I already spent all of your inheritance, like blah, blah, blah. And like it was coming out. And then and then Mr. Wintergarden, who is, because they end up having a whole romance at Santa Land. We'll get into it. Uh, but like we know that they're going to get together. He's like, yeah, well, a good thing I'm a billionaire. He's like, Cat, you have, I'm going to make sure you're a recording artist and you don't have to worry about an apartment and I'll pay for everything. And it's like, how about you pay for a lawyer? Because she stole all of your dad's <laughs> yeah. money. Like, that's the point. Like, not like, oh, well, like, you're indebted to my son. Like, you better not break his heart. Like, yeah. So, by the way, I like created an entire fake narrative for these two dads because the, oh, yeah. the, the dad seems really upset that he lost track of the other dad and that their friendship kind of like fell apart and he died and like he didn't help. like oh they so had, they a, had bro- a broke back they had broke back they had broke back Everest broke back broke back snow mountain all over yeah. the world <laughs> they had broke back mountain you know the, the I mean that was pretty obvious I thought yeah because <laughs> he's like seems quite affected like by yeah. the fact that and and. And the guilt, you know, that must be what happened. Yeah. So I, we also never see this his, movie. We varied. also never see his wife. Yeah, at all. So you know, that's right. And that would make sense then that maybe her dad would just marry like a beard, right? Know? Oh so. yeah, that that does make sense. A, we have made this movie better. I wonder if that was on their character backstory sheet. I doubt it. <laughs> <laughs> so back to Santa Land. Santa Land. Where so, La- Laura Morano, we haven't even said her name. She works there. Her name's yep. Kat. Kat Decker. She's a elf with her best friend, another elf. Yeah. Who her best friend looks exactly like young Anne Hathaway, right? Like, do you not see this? Uh, she does kind of. Yeah. I didn't, Isabella Gomez. Yeah. yeah. I thought she was great. Anne Hathaway's not Hispanic, but like they're face and their mannerisms are so similar. Maybe it's just because I watched Princess Diaries like a thousand times, mm-hmm. but possibly. Anyway. Possible. 
Um, yeah, I liked her friend. Uh, was it Isla? Isla, yeah. Isla? She was definitely the best of the best friends. Yeah. Maybe maybe not better than well, what's his face from and original. And she brings but... magic back into this because she makes two dresses. Yeah, she plagiarizes <laughs> in two dresses. Tw- in 24 <laughs> hours uh, in a way that is impossible. <laughs> hey, she's the fairy godmother, so she, she is. she's well, got she's all the really magic. She's really more legit than any of these other people because not only can she make amazing fashion designs and dresses, she also runs their business right. and is the one that is like making them money by doing these like singing telegrams basically. Right. Yeah, yeah. Um yeah, they go around dressed as elves at night and sing for people in their doorways. Night elves. That one that one they have like one scene of them doing that and I thought mm-hmm. it was pretty funny cuz yeah. she's like joking like Santa wants to hump you and then the people <laughs> open the door and they're like jingle bells. <laughs> 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 Which I, I thought that was kind of funny. Yeah. <clears throat> but uh yeah, they both work at uh, um, Santa, Santa Land, Land. with Mi- Mr. McJesa. McJesa? Yeah. I thought the, the one Mr. time... Mr. McJesus. <laughs> I was going to say... <laughs> but yeah, the one time uh, D- uh, Dominic said his name, I thought he said McJesus, yeah. too. And I was like, what? I had to look it up. Where he's just basically a strict Santa slave driver. Yeah. He's like he's got like Disney character ambitions, or he's like, you could never be yeah. seen without your costume. Right. You know, like you don't refer to them as the character. <laughs> it seems like a... Yeah, and he, he, it seems like maybe he was a character who had lots of stuff on the cutting room floor or something, because... Like, yeah, it seemed like he was going to be a bigger presence, like bugging them at Santa Land all the time. Yeah, he's only in a few scenes, but it's just an. <laughs> Never mind, I'm not even going to do it. <laughs> what? <laughs> no, 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 no. Moving on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah. So, uh, oh, we should say we we have to at least set up the beginning, uh, the first meetup of Cat and uh, Dominic Wintergarden. She much much like the diner scene, we have to have a scene where the prince oh, yeah. has no idea who this person is. Yeah, because it's kind of a dick. It comes back later in a very hilarious way. I think. I don't think he was a dick to her. He no, her get up. And yeah, yeah, yeah. It no, was he the was friends that were. Yeah, yeah, everyone else was laughing and taking videos. But basically, she trips with a bunch of Starbucks frappuccinos in her yeah. hand and spills them all over his Prada shoes or whatever. And she becomes Does Prada make shoes. Starbucks, <laughs> probably. <laughs> I don't know. They Starbucks girl. Yeah, yeah, she goes viral or whatever, which is stupid. That's not even that funny. It wouldn't go viral. No. <laughs> yeah, it's so stupid. Yeah, later they're like, "Are you? Oh, you're a meme, right?" And I'm like, I don't the, "This is very much written by third year old dudes who have... or Michelle Johnston, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> who's probably in her sixties, but you know what? I'm sure a very nice lady. Yeah, um, but listening to what the kids are talking about. Right, right. But you can tell, like, because obviously, like, Michelle Johnston, yes, she's now a writer, director, producer, but her choreographer Bones were like, I can't deal with this Laura Murano. So they have her do a little dinky dance with her friend <laughs> when they're in Elves. And then as soon as they get to the big gala and they have real dancers doing it, they're just doing, like, these crazy, like, modern dance yeah. things and, like, all of this, like, oh, remember I was in chorus line choreography <laughs> and just, like, all this crazy shit. So I love right. that. And she's, and, in that sequence, she's just inserted and not knowing any of the choreography. Yeah. She's like, oh, it's just all just happening to her. I mean, it makes sense Th- because how she dances Austin in and life, Allie though. and those Disney shows, physical comedy is a big part of it. Sure. Because they are always getting into crazy hijinks and, you know, whatever. So they knew she could do that. And so they were probably just like, oh, get out there and act bewildered. They must have been more confident than I think that the results on the screen were. <laughs> but. <laughs> I love the uh, so that that sequence when they're singing toys, toys, toys up on the stage in front toys, of everybody. Toys, toys, toys. Yeah, and and the audience is like, "Wow, this is a great song!" And they're dancing, and like, <laughs> was there sixty five year old people in this? <laughs> this is a great. Song. That, yeah, that was the kids in their head. Yeah. By the way, none of these children are credited for anything, so none uh, of them will be yeah. checked in with. Um, but they're they're dancing up on the stage, and my my eyes were just wandering around because I'm like, what? happening now and there's a creepy man (laughs) in the window there's a guy guy like up like two stories above them in this like facade behind them sticking his head out and he's just like smiling like hey moving his head ever so slightly and his eyes is like what the fuck it's horrifying and we never and we never see him again i know and And there's like just like face window guy it's because it's funny because there's other windows in the scene where you're like oh everyone's heads are or there's a head in every window but no the other windows are empty and this one's just like some guy 
You know, I don't know. Maybe it was just it was like some set decorator that was like, I'm going to F with this scene. Like, no, he's in multiple angles and multiple oh, okay. cuts. <laughs> yeah, it's just very, it's very <laughs> awkward looking. Uh, but I had a good time laughing at that. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, and he's like, he's not, like, he looks like, um, I'm blanking on the voice staring, actor who does, who does Bender, but he looks like him. Yeah, yeah. He's staring like Jack Nicholson through the, you know, door. <laughs> yeah. In, uh, <laughs> <laughs> or Hugh McGregor, Hugh McGregor in Doctor Sleep, because he has, because he has to carry that axe. <laughs> That's right. He's got to do it. It but has I, to happen. I, I don't know if I told you this, but when we were at the theater, they had like the props from Doctor sure. Sleep, and they had the tricycle and the little boy's clothes. And I heard some child coming out with their father, looking at this t- exhibit, and he was like. I don't get it. What does a little kid on a bike have to do with sleep? And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, that's a story. Like you're right, kid. <laughs> Doctor Sueño. That's how they call it in Costa Rica. <laughs> I like that better. <laughs> What's Spanish for doctor? Doctor. Senor. Doctor Sueño. <laughs> doctor. Uh, anyways, back to Christmas. Um, Christmas. Yeah, they're hiring a new Santa, and he doesn't look like the normal Santas. He's cute. He's cute, Santa. And, and of he's, course, and he's shoving some some tummy pillows. Yeah, of course, he doesn't recognize uh, Kat because she's got pink hair and she's got pink ears. hair. Even and though a she hat. spilled pink frappuccinos all I over her thinking. brown hair, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So. It doesn't make any. sense. You guys, there's a scene in this movie. There's a scene in this movie where there's a scene where they do strip poker Mm -hmm. taking off. Oh God, that's right. (laughs) Various pieces of their costumes. They're basically like, show me yours and I'll show you mine. Take off your Santa hat. Take off your elf ears. Take off your mustache. Take off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) Take off the mustache, which is separate from the beard. Yeah. And, uh, I like how he takes off, he takes off the hat and the wig and she's still like, wow, who are you? <laughs> and then he takes off the mustache and she's like, holy shit. Oh, you're... my God. That, that tiny white mustache was hiding the fact that you're a Dominic Winter Garden. You're Dommy Winter Garden. Your dad's a billionaire and he throws a party and we don't quite understand what that means. How dare you invite me to this party? I'm too poor and stupid to go to it. I can't accept this. Get that invitation Get away that from me. Get that invitation away from me. Um, that scene was really hilarious, though. So that the also strip bro- poker scene. Yeah. Oh, oh my god, that strip poker scene is like what is happening? There's no poker, by the way. They're just talking to each <laughs> Wait, other. Wait, no, no, no. Y- yes, it's not strip poker, but it is the the, the dynamic of which somehow you- makes it worse. Yeah, you you remove a piece, and I'll remove a piece. Yeah, I think someone actually says that. Yeah, verbatim. <laughs> and and it is so obvious who they are in a way that is upsetting and it makes the characters dumber and less likable. Okay, so we've had issues with like people how dumb our characters <laughs> yeah, are in this franchise. People recognizing each other in the, the entire thing. The one thing I did like about this uh uh I almost said episode. This this uh film was that they kind of flipped around like who was hit more hidden in this one where it was like, oh, the mm-hmm. prince was, you know, the one who was like very obviously covered up. He looked completely different. Yeah. In he till- looked completely different, but the, the girl like was just her full face and whatever, pink hair. He still doesn't recognize her though. I know, but that's what I'm saying. I Yeah, I that's true. But I liked that like the roles were like, like he was hiding more the whole time than she was really hiding. Right, like they yeah, were both like, kind of no, hiding. Yeah, but. I guess I guess they bonded because they're just like, oh, like this guy's pretty cool. Usually, like, the I whole like time it's just like, I'm gonna pretend to be some other person so I can get close to the prince. Yeah, fair enough. This one is like she they didn't were already really close. like they weren't trying to use anything she left behind to find her. Like she did leave her journal behind one yeah, time, but somber. he didn't really use it to find her. He was just and they kind make of a like, big deal out of it. He like, was like, I tried to find you, but I didn't know your last name. Like. <laughs> That's pretty much I it. put up like, signs uh, with lyrics from. I was like, "Does started, anybody here own a Zune?" No, yeah, this movie would be like. I started tweeting out uh, song lyrics from your book and was hoping you might retweet me, and then I'd know it was you. Ugh, but thankfully, they don't do that. <laughs> they might have. It might be on the cutting one floor with Mr. McJesus. <laughs> Mr. McJesus. So, what did you think about their ages this time? Did they seem age appropriate? They seemed uh, like not in school. Yeah, I didn't know what year. Uh, 
<laughs> so, I mean, like, they, she's like, they seem like freshmen in college. She's purportedly 17 because she can't access her inheritance oh, until right. she turns 18. So she's playing 17, uh, 23 for 17. And he is I mean, 27. No one's ever age appropriate for, I feel, well, no, they are, but I feel like they were age appropriate for the parts, kind of. Yeah, I at least they're it only didn't four seem, years It didn't apart. seem like he was way older than her or anything. No. Um. Yes, he did not feel like that he was way older, but that was mostly because of his shitty friends. Yeah, yeah. So this goes back to like what we criticized Chad Michael Murray for having no good friends whatsoever. Uh, this guy had like the last two or th- no, not the Sophia Carson guy, but the other two guys had decent black sidekick friends. Yeah, and this guy has a black sidekick and like a Hispanic or Middle Eastern sidekick, but they both suck. Yeah. They're both terrible, and there's a point in this movie where he calls her. Look, he's like he knows who she is, knows that she works at the Santa Land, and then just calls her over for a Santagram. So she's like, "I just wanted to meet my friends," and there it's like the girl who wants to date him, and then people who hate her. Yeah, and and like before she comes in, like there's this whole long scene where he's like, "You guys." Whatever you do, I really like this girl for real. Yeah. Be nice. Do not do anything stupid. This is, he should have been like, this is my fucking house. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> don't, but don't you know. Dude, dude, yeah, he, you're shit. all disinvited to the ball. That's if right. You fuck with me. And also like. And they're immediately just like. But no, he Ooh. never condemns them. He never, he no. never even says that like, not oh, like those aren't end, my friends. Yeah. He just keeps even saying. Even at the end. I, yeah. He just keeps saying like, I just wanted you to meet my friends. Well, yeah. He's like, your why? friends they're, they're suck. Terrible. Your there friends are multiple <laughs> times where he only has four friends, two girls and two boys. Right. There are multiple what, times within earshot, like when they're five feet away from the girls and there's the blonde girl that likes him where the one guy is like, she totally wants to get with you, man. And this girl is like. So close to them, there's no way she can't hear the entire <laughs> yeah. conversation. She's like, "Who doesn't want to get with Sydney?" Like, yeah. Yeah, oh my god, that was weird. Sydney. Yeah, I'm like, I'm like, are they really friends? They made it seem like they were just like Instagrammers that were hanging around. Here. No, like, uh, and there's <laughs> never a point in the movie where he's just like, "Those aren't my friends." Like, I care about you. It's just like, no, these are people I care about. At like, the very end, she says, "Oh, are you just gonna actually go out with Starbucks girl instead of me?" She's like, not up to my level or whatever. Or she's she's not at my level, and he's like. Yeah, well, you could dream or something like. Yeah, you like could that. dream yeah. to be on her level. Yeah, we're not well, at the same can... level. That's what she yeah, says. And he yeah. says, "Oh, well, you can always dream." And I did he... that. I did like that dig. That was a good yeah. one. She so, probably didn't get it. But. So the other, so the structure that we're the structure that we're getting to in this movie again is that she wants to be a recording artist, and our prince is secretly a manager. Mm. Of bands. Yeah, I didn't expect that to come back, but it did. <laughs> hey, it's part of the based on characters. Stuff. It's part of the yeah. based on characters, and he he can't tell his dad because his dad's too rich. He's just too rich. <laughs> and gay. I'm so rich, rich. <laughs> I don't need to listen to music. Like, yeah. <laughs> and so he is secretly booking bands out there. Yeah. Bands like... I don't remember the first band's name, but there's one. There's only one band that really matters. <laughs> DJ Sock Puppet. D- D- DJ <laughs> Sock, Puppet. Sock Puppet. And so he says and, this as a throwaway line. And it's like, did he just say fucking DJ he does, Sock Yeah, Puppet? except that it's not just throw. I mean, he says it and then no, no, I know. Kat and is then, like, oh, what? No, I no, love no, it. no, no. First, first, his stereotypical <laughs> black friend is like, what, bro? <laughs> DJ Sock Puppet? <laughs> I could not believe that that was the name of a thing no. in this movie. <laughs> and then Cat is like, "Oh, DJ Sock Puppet. DJ Sock Puppet. How many times can we say it? How many times <laughs> can we say DJ Sock? Puppet? If you say it three times in front of the mirror, <laughs> yes. Sock Puppet. Sock Puppet. Sock Puppet. <laughs> um, and then it kind of goes away, and you're like, "Oh, like that was just a dumb throwaway thing that yeah. that's supposed to happen." And <laughs> the billion with a B. Boy's dad. He likes to swim his problems out like Mr. Rogers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Go see a beautiful day in the neighborhood, by the way. It's a fantastic film. It is very mm-hmm. good. Um Yeah. It, it's a uh, uh <sighs> <laughs> you speechless. Wait, are you trying to like skip to the end here? No, what? no, I'm not trying to skip to the end. I'm trying to justify him being, I want to be a talent manager 
I am not telling my dad about this. I think that you have talent as a singer, but <laughs> you all, but but we also have this a, really complicated. But we also have a co-working relationship, and so I am not going to offer to help you with that. Not too early. Not too early. They only knew each other for like two weeks before Christmas, <laughs> yeah. or later, or after. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Anyway, don't it know. turns out, like, he thinks his dad doesn't understand him, but it's because he didn't know his dad was gay and understands <laughs> the, the arts. He actually and listens his to people's people. dreams. Yeah, they actually have a very nice relationship. He gives him advice about what to do about this girl and whatnot. And at the end of the movie. Wait, let's save this part. We okay. Gotta, we got to do it right. <laughs> But, uh, our, okay, so this, we talking about the, we get into the gala already? Well, okay, first though, I want to say that they do have a song, a duet together, where she can fly. Oh yeah, this is one where it's like, <laughs> oh, remember La La Land? Let's oh, do something God. kind yeah. of like Oh that? yeah. <laughs> remember that? And Elis, you love, you love this. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> this was slightly more of a, no, it's not. This is I worse than La La Land. I'll I was say. like, why is she flying? Justin, <laughs> Justin, I think that we should just, Seed the floor to Elis to go on a rant about La La Land and about this sequence. No, it's like... No, I want to hear it. This is the only song in the movie that is... I always forget which is which. Non-diegetic. Diegetic. Diegetic is within the the scene. This is the only song that is non-diegetic where they just break out into song and sing about each other's feelings, and it makes no sense. Well, there is one when she's in her room that's transition, where she's like, she sits at the piano in her room and starts playing, singing, and then her hands leave the piano as she leans back, but the piano keeps going. Oh, God. Okay, so it's all mixed up, so who gives yeah. a shit, but yeah, like... Turn around. The fact that they're just, like, dancing around, and then all of a sudden, like, because they only really could, could handle, like, one set piece with the flying effect, and only one of them can fly. So he's just kind of, like, walking around on the ground, and she's just kind of like lightly flying from box to box and he's like pretending to like sort of give her a little yeah. boost and this is the one where he's clearly not singing i was oh, like there no. is no way that's his voice do we have a do you have a clip of this i mean if you want to hear the song i can play it right now it's called santa brought me you Featuring Chris P. Is it me or just the holidays? Because I've been feeling kind of strange. Does he even sound like him? I, that's what I said. He sounds like he's on cough syrup. Like the snow. Oh. <laughs> oh, God, why? Warm blankets and mistletoe. Nice something I've been looking for. This part's okay. Yeah. I'm just Whoa, whoa, whoa. This Here we isn't go. something we I go. would normally do, but I guess the season's got me falling for you. Right. Ugh. Toys again. Yeah, I know. I told you every they song asked has for toys. all the toys and the goodies, Tyler. It's like I wouldn't usually be into you, but seasonal depression's a bitch. So speaking of depression, man, this is the darkest of all the Cinderella stories. It truly is. It so, is not. I mean, normally we have our plucky heroine that never really gives up. This girl is not like that at all. She gives up every time. She's always sad and depressed. It's just like it's only her friend really pushing her out. She kind of barely has confidence in the final scene only only after she's done the performance but that yeah she's just like so down and depressed this right. movie also has endless ridicule of a handicapped dog like it does I. endless <laughs> poor ridicule. bruno poor by the way bruno. bruno is the name of the dog in the animated cinderella oh. so i thought that was interesting i liked the bruno dog he was cute i did too he's and he's little- also like I was like, he's like the Benji or Lassie of this movie. He's he was like, like a little. Yes. He's always like, bark, bark over here. Look at this letter. Bark, bark, bark. <laughs> it was messed up, too, because in one of the times when the stepmother and stepsisters are threatening her, they took the dog out of his little brace and they were like threatening. They were like holding him in a very threatening, kind of menacing way. I also love there's a scene uh, where she gets this amazing dress from Isla and um she needs to hide after, it somewhere. After 40 minutes of hemming she, and stuff. Yeah, she needs to hide it somewhere. And so th- so this dog, uh, you know, the dog has like those, you know, wheels for its back yeah. legs. Like a BK Kids Club. Yep. And so it has a it has a bed that's like really low on the ground so it can easily get in this bed, right? Mm-hmm. And the dog goes, bark, bark, hide it over here, bark, bark. 
And she's like, oh, my God, perfect. They'll never look in your bed. And she puts this huge box under the bed that makes it now, like, way up off the ground. And I'm like, the dog can't get in that bed now. There's no way he can get in that bed. And bark, she's, bark. And I didn't mean to go put the box under the bed, bark, bark. Yeah, but she's like, yes, Bruno, that's such a great idea. Yeah. And she lays down like, ah. And the next scene is them finding it immediately. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the very next scene, the stepsister's wearing the dress yes, like, yeah. thanks for this gift. Uh, yeah, so the, the so MacGuffin dark. or plot point or whatever you want to call it is that the stepmother and stepsisters want to get to the Winter Garden Ball uh, because the stepmother wants to infiltrate and marry this billionaire with a B because his wife just died, but... Spoiler alert, he just wanted to fuck Cat's dad. Yeah. Um, <laughs> maybe the assistant is his, like, oh, boyfriend. Maybe. Could be, could be. Because he had a merce and was very, very uh, precious about those invitations. Yeah. He was. That was a so. weird scene. So, yeah. So they ended up getting invitations by faking that one of the girls was actually Cat because Dominic's dad was friends Mm-hmm. With, with Kat's dad. dad. Yeah. Yep. And so uh, she reaches out and be like, oh, like I'm, I'm, you know, his, her his widow, his widow. And oh, I bring Kat and my younger daughter. And so they're running an elaborate ruse. It's so where, stupid. Cause why didn't she just say, I have three daughters. Right. And not do a ruse. Right. <sighs> but no, but no. And then, so they end up having fake accents and oh, that was so dumb. a bunch of stepsister hijinks. But the thing that their plan necessitates is that Kat has a snow globe that apparently there's only two. They, they, it's hiding they, some artifact. It's, it's, hiding, an ar- it's <laughs> hiding an artifact where uh, Mr. Wedgarden and her dad went to the North Pole and then I guess... They got Found commemorative some- snow globes. <laughs> they, they got some artifact and they built it into a commemorative snow globe. Yeah, you know, at the snow globe <laughs> gift shop at the North Pole. <laughs> yeah. and We got the last two in the world. And it's very important to her and it's missing. And they're like, where is it? Where is it? And these... Her family lies to her and <laughs> it's so steals it up. from her. It's so messed up. So they could go to the ball and pretend. And the, the whole thing is just like, oh, well, like, you can never pretend to be her because you're too dumb. But if you just show this artifact that everyone knows is special, it'll be fine. Yeah. But turns out that at her work, she's still getting invited to the gala anyway because Dominic's fucking Santa Claus. <laughs> yep. I, think I mean, he's no, he's fucking not, Santa he's Claus? He's not having sex with Santa Claus. <laughs> oh. He is Santa Claus. Oh, I was confused. This is like, but like one father, of the like first son. ones where there really is a ball in which invitations and whatnot are part of the intrigue. Like, that's a classic Cinderella thing that we haven't really had in these Yes, Cinderella's. but absurdly so. It's like, it's yeah. not clear what town this is in. She's like, oh, it's the biggest party of the year. And it's like, and it's a benefit for animals and yeah it's like, and then really, when we like who gives a when shit? we actually get to the gala i was like this looks like a, a bad high school prom yeah this, <laughs> it looks like it took place at the it Santa looks Clarita like it's at a, yeah, yeah. It looks yeah. like it's at a country like, club yeah. like yeah i was like eh, this does not look like a gala <laughs> or a Billion gala a, or whatever Billion, she says gola. A gola. Gola. it's pronounced gala. they are so dumb billionaire with a beat mm-hmm, mm-hmm. um so they all end up at the party. They are terrible fucking people. Uh, so yeah, they steal the dress uh, that is and the ma- ruin it and she ruin can't it. Even just wear it for what it is. She right. has to ruin it. Yeah, yeah. And they ruin it. So she makes the dress. Like, all this takes place within a day, and yeah. the dress <laughs> and the dress is uh, imitation of a dress that they saw in the window of a very expensive shop mm-hmm. that they were staring at uh, during our music video interlude. And it's and- just like memorizes it, like. Boing! Wait, wait, wait. Like photocopies it. Professional seamstress. <laughs> and then it's so it's stolen. She finds that out at probably 3 p.m. <laughs> yeah. And then it's also running the entire outfits and Christmas style nonsense for this gala. Yeah, and but she makes a backup. In her yeah, in her free time, <laughs> she makes a second dress. Just in case. That's even more wonderful. Are you saying that in the moments before she knocks out that elf dancer and then is going to go up as the snow queen 
Isla makes the dress right then. I think so. <laughs> no, she had it already. I think so. She's like, I have a dress for you, and you're going to love it. So then we have a very uppity producer who's for, like, oh, my God, oh, my God, the cat, you got to get out there. You got to get out there. You're an elf. Elves go out on the stage, and then we get a really painful uh, choreographed dance scene where she doesn't know how to dance. Dance of the Christmas Elves. There's yep. a track on the soundtrack on Spotify if you want to yeah. check it out. Let's hear some of it. Now. No, uh, no, no, no. Uh, and <laughs> then she, then oh, the ice queen had what happened to her? Uh, so during the course of the dance of the Christmas elves, oh yes, they're, they're like they're spinning doing a around. Titanic spin, yeah. yeah. And then she's like, "I'm losing my grip," and she drops yeah. her, and she hits her head and passes. I out. did think that was kind of funny because yeah. the other girl's like, "What are you doing? <laughs> Don't let go of me. Never let go." And then she dies. Never yeah. let go. <laughs> And so now, uh, yeah, the producer is just like, you have to be the Snow Queen now because you yeah. just killed the other one. So That's how showbiz works. <laughs> That's right. So even though you don't know the song and apparently don't even know what Christmas is, get up there and <laughs> sing about it. Yeah, and so she, the, her friend's like, I'm going to give the DJ your track again, your selected yeah. track. But then all the dancers just like, you know, are such geniuses that they adapt and they make a uh, uh, a, a whole full ballet, yeah, around yeah. her song, which includes a, crowd surfing <laughs> yeah. with her and lifts and all sorts of like insane. Moves. A Nebuchadnezzar style opera, yeah. It was. She doesn't even really dance; she just keeps putting her <laughs> arms <laughs> out. Uh, so oh no, she, she cannot dance. No. She sings a song. Everyone's like, "Wow, that's cool!" And she's <laughs> like, "I'm the real cat." Yeah. Um, and yeah, and then and then the. Mr. Wintengarden basically is like, yeah, like I will pay for everything. And then um, as like everything's happening, she's like, oh, you'll never have to worry about anything. I'll pay for your apartment. Like you're going to like, I'll get like, I'll make sure that you can get a recording deal, whatever it is. And then she's like, he's like, son, same thing. Like you never have to worry about anything ever again. Life and is great. Life is hug? Life is great. Why don't you hug? And then curtains get drawn back. Yeah, so this is amazing. I don't know what happened in this end sequence of the movie, but it sounds to me like someone, like they had an idea in filming and then they were in the end like, no, 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 uh, let's use like a different, it need, the song just needs to be like a happy ending song, not not like a hip hop song or a EDM song. So all of a sudden, yeah, the curtain opens, but you hear this like <laughs> Lumineers like jing 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 and then like the curtain opens and they're like, oh my god, DJ, DJ sock, sock puppet. puppet, and there's a guy like behind a you know with headphones behind a, a c- computer like clearly like bopping to some sort of not this guitar that's playing this like folksy guitar, and then and then they're all like, holy shit, and the dad's like, you know what, son, I knew all along you liked the. No. Music. Music. No, so like what you thought I didn't listen. <laughs> no, he's just like DJ Song Puppet. Dad, how did you know? And the dad goes, It's what I do. And it's like, <laughs> Is it? <laughs> what do you do? And then they're like, We should go dance. And they, <laughs> they go on the dance floor. And they jump up and down as if like something from Coachella <laughs> is playing like like it's like ding like, ding like, ding, like ding, Dead ding, Mouse ding. is playing. Yeah. And he's like, you know, he clearly can't dance either. He's just jumping like, yeah, like oh, he can dance worse. And it's hilarious because literally everyone else at the party is standing still like they don't give a fuck. What's <laughs> happening? They're the only ones dancing out on the dance And floor. allegedly, <laughs> Dominic is managing DJ Sock Puppet at this point. Yeah. I don't. I don't think that was a good uh, a good show for DJ Sock Puppet. The crowd was not, <laughs> not having into it. Do it. I just was like, clear. I think someone in the in post must have been like, "No, nah, we can't end on like a DJ sock puppet." <laughs> also, there are no young people at this ball other than like the two friends and the right. stepsisters. Yeah. They're all old. I was just like, something went wrong with this this final scene. <laughs> <laughs> something happened here with the music, man. Does not match. It does not match the vibe. Uh, and then it. Ends. Mm-hmm. And as I said, it was just like, oh, yeah, like the stepmother like completely plays her hand and just like, I embezzled all of your dad's money <laughs> and completely fucked up your life and like blah, blah, blah. And then like the solution is just 
well, I'm a billionaire and I'll just pay for everything and not just like he was my friend and lover. And, <laughs> <laughs> and I that would have been a great like reveal at the end. Yeah, it's like it's the principle of the goddamn thing. And you're going to fucking court because you stole all of his money. Yeah. Also, I'm going to adopt you instead of this horrible yeah. person. <laughs> By the way, like if you have a kid and you're a widow or a widower and you get married to someone else. I'm just going to say, like, flat out, no matter how much you love them and no matter how great they are, just write the money to your kid in the will. Right. Forget the guardian. Forget all of it. Who yeah. cares? Just leave the money to your kid, yes. people. Haven't we learned anything now after five Cinderella stories? Yeah. <laughs> As they're writing the will, they're like, oh, this sounds familiar, but I think it's prudent that an adult should have it first. Well, you know you should leave it to <laughs> DJ Sock Puppet. DJ Sock Puppet! DJ Sock Puppet! You guys, I wish you could see this scene just just for... It's it's ridiculous. I was telling Justin that I was in tears. Yeah. Because the way that they pull the curtain back, it is... They're so excited for this thing that is the (laughs) dumbest movie concept that I maybe have ever seen. Is there a real DJ Sock Puppet anywhere in this world? I mean, probably, but who knows. And also, DJ Sock Puppet has nothing on his laptop that signifies that that is his gimmick. There's like I was was hoping that he was going to have like a a Sock sock Puppet puppet hand or something (laughs) like... Look at there's makes, a DJ it sock makes puppet sense. on SoundCloud. Right he has now. he has oh, a God. sock and like that's what he scratches with. But it literally looked like Moose and his buddy, oh, where like they look like teenagers. Um, I love uh, <laughs> look at. There's actually a DJ sock puppet SoundCloud page, but it says nothing to hear here. <laughs> nah. um, well, that's why they had to change the song. <laughs> they were gonna yeah. do some viral marketing with this. It was gonna be like an alternate reality situation, but then they didn't get enough budget. It was really funny. <laughs> I I like I hadn't talked to Tyler all weekend, and then like on Sunday, out of nowhere, I just messaged him. DJ Sock Puppet. And I was like, what the fuck is that? And then I started watching the movie later, and I was like, fucking DJ Sock Puppet. I fucking hate you. Uh, (laughs) It's just like, they could have, and they they said it so many times. They could have thought of any other name. So many times. (laughs) Any other name. Uh, So I think that's coming towards the, is there anything else to say about this movie? No. no, no. Or this, okay, well, uh, do we want to talk about the franchise overall? Well, let's rate this one first. Oh, boy. You want to do the uh, commemorative snow globes? I would say how many one of a kind North Pole snow globes mm. would you give? Um, this whole time I was like, "Hey, you know what? I love, I really love Christmas songs, and I lo- might love them more than toys, next person. toys, toys." But I was like, "Not like this, <laughs> not, <laughs> not like, like this. not like this, you guys." <laughs> I'm all about Christmas music in general, but um. Yeah, this, uh, you know, I was interested to see what uh, a Christmas version of this would be, and there were some okay moments, and but the songs were, the songs maybe could have been okay if they weren't so, like, auto-tuned yeah. to death. Yeah, Seriously, they it was didn't all sound, in the production. Yeah, like, they the didn't songs sound were fine like as songs. They're not, like, in their mouths at all. And there's even a couple scenes towards the end where, like, Laura Morano like, is off sync with the music yeah. or something. Yeah, and I'm just it's like, really what? obvious. I'm like, what is going on here? Uh, so I, I'm, not, I'm not sure what happened with that. But um, overall, I think I'd probably go with, like, two one-of-a-kind snow globes from the North Pole. This gets one one of a kind. Ooh, I'm gonna give it two because I just I'm. So I thought Laura Morano was like good. At, she's fine. Like, acting. I thought she's so she depressed. Fine. Like she's the most depressed Cinderella. Yeah. Like she didn't have any of that. You guys, heroism. This was the worst one. <laughs> was it? This was the worst one. Uh, Which was like okay, if you want to do a serious yeah, Cinderella, yeah. fine. Like that's a thing, you know. But like this is it. Re- it. Re- it. Re- Think about all the elements of all the other ones and the things that we could dig out that we liked. Like, this had none of those things. Oh, wait, here's the question. Here's the real question. Okay. What was the Christmas wish? Uh, <laughs> she wanted to go to the Winter Garden Ball. Did she, though? No, she didn't give a fuck. <laughs> she Did. wanted her songs to become successful? She, she wanted... The money from her dad's and Well, yeah. you know, as soon as some <laughs> rich dude who is a stranger kind of gets you an apartment in New York, your rise to the top is almost assured. Yeah. 
Anyways, what's your order for this series? We got five Man, movies. I feel like that's very difficult, and I can't even remember the name. I'm like, I'm gonna have to bring. Okay, them here up. I wrote. I wrote mine down, so I will tell you. So, okay. best one, number one, Hillary Duff, Cinderella Story, Regina King. Yes, yeah, yeah for sure. Jesus. The next one, I'm gonna say, despite the rampant uh, cultural appropriation and racism, Lucy Hale is my number two. Yes, favorite. and also. Credit to this movie for not having as yes, much. Yes, we finally dropped that. Lucy yes. Hale is Once Upon a Song, right? Lucy Hale is Once Upon a Song. And I still just think that those two leads and the fact that they made the step-siblings characters. Like that one, that I'll ex- have to excuse the appropriation and i make that sure. the second best one. The third best one is uh, If the Shoe Fits, Sophia Carson. Um, I don't love her, but it was at least... You know, she's a great dancer. She's a good dancer, and it yep. was okay. And Jen, and uh, Jennifer Tilly was in that. One. Yeah. Yep. So yeah, to, uh, my fourth best one is um, another Cinderella story. Selena Gomez weird child molestation, and this is the worst one. Like you said, the yeah. Christmas wish. I mean, and just because the uh, Selena Gomez at least had that one song going for it, and Jane Lynch. Whereas yeah. this really doesn't have anything. I, I, Tell me something I don't know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's, that's a song. That song is just a good song. I'm sorry. I do feel like, and this is my opinion about this, and it feels like this is kind of what how your rankings fell, is that these series were kind of judged by their evil stepmothers. Um, aside from the first one, I, I mean, she's she's great, but I think that, that there's a better story being told here, but like this last one is the last one where there is not a legit character actress. Yeah. You know, happening. I think that, that I agree with your order. I think mm-hmm. that that's the exact same. I think I would me. have to say the same too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, where I think that, that Missy Pyle is awesome uh, mm-hmm. in the Lucy, is Lucy Hale. Lucy Hale. Yeah, yeah Lucy yeah. Hale won. And I think Lucy Hale, like, I, that I, bumped that one up for me. She I think was, she's... like, the most charming of the Cinderella's other than Hillary Duff. Yeah, yeah. I, think I think she's a pretty great actress. Yeah. It's, it's you know, because Cinderella, when you strip it down, it's, like, it's either a story about Cinderella and the prince is a character, right. and it's all about the romance and maybe the stepmother and the Fred Godmother are all on the peripheral, or in what usually is a more interesting thing is, like, the... the um, the Lily Rose and Kate Blanchett Cinderella, where it's really like these two female, you know, f- women going head to head, and the prince, yeah, you know, he's whatever, he's on, he's there, either. yeah. But it's really about the relationship between the stepmother and this girl. Yeah. The prince doesn't know what he wants. Like wh- yeah. whoever gets to, whoever gets there first, he's going to be like, yeah, whatever. So <laughs> the better stepmother you have, the better movie it's going to be. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, these are four teens, and so they really want to focus on that love story and and the princes and everything. But yeah, I think that there's definitely something to be further explored with i mean the thing about cinderella is is difference of class and difference of you know personality and and true love and all of those things and i I feel like that all of these teen movies are just through the lens of popularity and celebrity and things like that and i think that there is definitely a cinderella story floating out there that uh tells a story of somebody coming from a normal life and someone dealing with one percenter and somebody coming to terms with what the differences of what it actually is to be alive right now and what it is like to be in that bubble. And I think that that would be something that would be very interesting to actually explore. Mm-hmm. Well, and, and another thing too, is like we talked about the horrible Bollywood and you yeah. know, uh, yoga thing, but like, all of these Cinderellas are are white. All are white. of these princes Absolutely. are white. We get a few vague, like Selena Gomez, okay, and like we get a few vaguely ethnic best friends or sidekicks, but like yeah. everybody is white, and it's like, what is the excuse for that in today's day and age? Right, yeah, and there are plenty one, of charismatic, popular teen actors that are of all different races. The newest one is from 2019. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. just so a, what just is a couple the weeks excuse ago. <laughs> to only have white characters in that movie? I don't know. Yeah, like there's absolutely a a version of the story where it's an undocumented immigrant and like it's somebody like and 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 in a way that that's actually meaningful and not just because like, or or just any anything you know yes. or like well, a, yeah. and the first the um. Oh no, they didn't. They 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 canned the thing about the guy being gay. He was straight. Huh? They should have okay, swapped. There to... needed to be gay characters in one of these movies yeah. for real gay characters. I'm not talking about the secret subtext added to these <laughs> yeah. fathers, but like there need to be gay characters. They need Broke to be back more pole. changes of gender. <laughs> like we talked about how 
making one of that movie have a stepbrother made such a huge difference. Just having one stepbrother one of these times. Why yeah. is there not a, you know, Cinderfella situation? That's a stupid name. But, you know, where the boy is the main character and the girl is... I friends, find that name very know? catchy. Yeah. yeah. Or why is there not one where, yeah, like where... um it's a evil stepfather or some other, you know, like change these things around. Like you can still have the base story and make it too different. The, these last four movies have just been so similar. And then the fact that they're all about, I want to be a pop star and sing. Yeah. Like, why yeah. did you make that? The why did thing? you think? Well, cause like, Oh, well, cause celebrity is the new yeah, royalty. I mean, bring and that it's in, like, yeah. Bring that in for Selena Gomez, I guess. But then they kept it for like the next yeah. five it's, months. It's kind of crazy. And, and the, there is no further exploration about like, what is the root of that fable and why is it, endured and i think that everything beyond i get the the modernization of the first one i think that that's fun i think that the riffing on that same interpretation cheapens it in a way that is like what is this even about anymore yeah Yeah, and there's tons of things that girls can want to do to rise above their station and circumstances other than singing and dancing like one of them could have been oh i want to be a serious actor i want to be a journalist i want to be a um i want to be a nuclear physicist accountant you know like whatever it is like i want to work for the big five like you know there's all sorts of things that girls can do to become rich and famous that are not just singing yeah yeah so I mean, yeah, you talked about how, like, the little change of having uh, a stepbrother was so exciting. And I would, I would say that um, – I think I mentioned this a little bit on one of the other episodes. But, like, the, the main – if you can call it even joy of this franchise for me has been, like, um, you know, going into each new film – since it's like the same story again, kind of seeing the different things that they toss around with the iconic, everyone knows the Cinderella story. So it's been a little bit fun to see like, Oh, well, how are they going to treat the stepmother Mm -hmm. this time? How are they going to like, you know, do the ball? How are they going to do the, like, how is he going to find out who Cinderella is, who Cinderella is? And that's been a little bit fun. Um, and strip poker Spanish scene. And it's been different franchise for us. I feel because yeah, this one has really been like the same movie every time, Mm -hmm. just tiny changes to the, the, to the uh, you know to the story and the makeup yeah. of everything and that's run been, program that's been yeah it's kind of <laughs> randomized <laughs> it. and that's been kind of fun to see but overall I'm like do we need to keep making the same movie again well, there's probably going to be more a of lot these. of times when we're doing these sequels we're like so happy when the on screen talent stays yeah and a lot of times like yes we're happy if it's the same director or the same writer but this one like we've had the same writer director now for three movies we had the same like two or three producers through all of them. And yet those people did not keep any sort of creative. I I think after watching five Cinderella modernization interpretation movies, like I still think that there's water in that. Well, sure. Like I feel, I still feel like that there's there. You could take a crack at modernizing Cinderella. Like you want to, you want the next movie, like Hillary Duff to come back and be like, I was Cinderella once. No, no, no. I don't give a shit about that. (laughs) I like I just I just think that it's it's been such a surface level riff yeah. on every iteration. I'm just thinking of Step Up when they like <laughs> Oh yeah. They reunite the crew and like Moose is back. Let's have all the Cinderellas come into like a, a, a Cinderella Avengers. Thing. Turns out they all know Greg Sulkin. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> let, let's uh let's flash forward to the future where all the Prince Charmings are total dicks and the Cinderellas unite to fucking beat the shit out yeah. of them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, where they're all where they're all stepmothers of their own, but then they're kind of, <laughs> But they're kind to their daughters, and so they start a... a... It doesn't sound like there's a movie there. Everyone's nice? What? Yeah. (laughs) Where's the conflict? (laughs) Well, no, they're going against all their princes because they're they're now... (laughs) That would be fun. In their second marriage. I mean, I predict there'll be another one of these in, you know, two to three years. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure there will be. A Valentine surprise. Yeah. It's an Easter extravaganza. <laughs> a Cinderella story. Chocolates in the box. <laughs> Cinderella story. The luck of the... Or kiss me, I'm Irish. The luck of yeah. the Irish. <laughs> oh, a, a Cinderella story. It's flag day. A Cinderella story, this time underwater. Yeah. Oh, indep- Cinderella story, Independence Day. Oh. I would see Cinderella fight aliens. We will not go silently into the night. We will not. <laughs> I do want to see the zombie Cinderella story where it's Ooh, a Halloween yeah. one. Yeah, that'd be great. Well, that's basically mm-hmm. Anna and the Apocalypse. An undead <laughs> Cinderella <that>. story. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But yeah, anyways, like if you like 
like the the I talked about it a hundred times. The Lily James Disney live action remake of Cinderella is better than all five of these movies, and I love it. So. And we at Sequel Sequel Rights love Lily James. Oh God, yes, <laughs> she's the best. Uh, so it's December, guys. Yeah, you know what that means. You already heard our sleigh bell intro. Mm-hmm. You're already in the holiday mood, and here at Sequel Rights, I think that we're pleased to tell you that we're going to jingle all the way <laughs> through the holidays through the holidays with our dear friend Arnold Schwarzenegger Arnie <laughs> and Anakin Arnie and Anakin it's a twofer <laughs> it's so it'll be quick yeah, yeah. Yep. short and sweet we got Sinbad in there it's going to be great it's going to be great I've already had multiple people say to me there were more than one of those so I go. think it's going to be good I mean I, I, I am going to predict that the second one should be forgotten immediately <laughs> But uh, we're going to find out. So, yeah, next week we're coming at you with Jingle All the Way. In the meantime, Eliz, where can people get in touch with us? Yeah, we need ideas for 2020, our yeah. third year. So please email us, sequelrights at gmail.com, and find us on social media on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Sequel Rights. If you have an action movie franchise that does not involve Vietnam, let us know. Yeah, a <laughs> yeah Vietnam no more story. Vietnam. God. A Vietnam story. Christmas <laughs> yeah, wish. Nope, no more Vietnam. <laughs> Vietnam. Apocalypse later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. And no. if you do, please rate and review us on Apple Podcasts. If you give us five stars, there's a very good chance if you give your suggestion for what we should do in 2020 that we're probably going to do it. So uh, if not, we'll just read them all on air. Mm-hmm. But until then, Turbo Man, jingle all the way. Christmas Eve, all the lights are out. Can't sleep, cause Santa's coming to town. Toys and treats, can't wait to see what we got. My wish list, did it come true or not? Toys, 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 I can't wait. Toys, 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 for Christmas Day. Toys, 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 Santa's coming to town. Toys, 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 so let's scream and shout. Christmas Eve, all the lights are out, I can't sleep. Santa's coming to town Toys and treats Can't wait to see what we got My wish list Did it come true or not? Toys, toys I can't wait No, I can't wait Oh Christmas toys, 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 toys I can't wait For Christmas Day Christmas Eve Can't sleep, cause Santa's coming to town Toys and